I mean, we see already today good and bad fallouts of the use of artificial intelligence technology. So consider in the medical domain, the wonderful capacity of AIs to read x-rays, for example, to read medical imaging. You know, there's wonderful potential, but then consider data privacy, even in the medical domain. Um, you know, if we don't have the proper social and legislative guardrails for the development of AI technology, including by AI, I just mean any kind of predictive algorithms, um, then I think it's it's uh, not a good thing. So if we want to move forward and get the benefits of AI technology, we need to have a sort of careful path forward. I'm very, very excited about um, the possibility of AI going inside the head, um, for example, to help individuals who have locked in syndrome or individuals who can't move for other reasons. Um, but the same technologies that may actually help individuals who are radically disabled um, may also be the kind of technologies um, that pose dangers. So I think, again, things have to move forward very carefully. Um, so Elon Musk recently demoed the use of a brain chip uh, in pigs, actually. And that technology, as he noted, is incredibly transformative for individuals who can't move. Um, wow, right? Um, and it's exciting that it may be, you know, 10 years away from development, actual use, that is. Um, or even five years away from actual use. But at the same time, suppose that normal people feel obligated to get brain chips so that they can um, continue their jobs and keep up with artificial intelligence um, to augment their intelligence. There, I think we have to be very careful because of the possibility that we could have dystopian outcomes. It depends on um, whether artificial intelligence turns out to be the best way to develop enhancements. And I, I mean, in particular, um, I think artificial intelligence technology will inevitably help with medical developments. Um, but what I mean in particular is you might wonder if everybody will utilize brain chips to augment their intelligence. Um, it depends if that's the most efficient and medically safest way for us to augment our intelligence. There could be other kinds of enhancements. Um, you know, so it really depends on how the medicine moves forward. For example, you could use just nanotechnology and regular biology to try to enhance intelligence. I do suspect that as society moves forward, people will want and be able to enhance both their cognitive and perceptual abilities. Consciousness is the felt quality of experience. So when you see the rich hues of a sunset or when you stub your toe, when you smell the aroma of your espresso shot, it feels like something to be you. Um, from the inside, you are the subject of experience and you don't really know directly what it's like to be anybody else. They can tell you and you can observe their behaviors, but you realize that they're conscious. But anyway, consciousness is essentially private and it's really the most personal aspect of our life because every feeling we have is through the lens of our conscious experience. Why do we need to be conscious? Why does it even feel like anything from the inside to be us? Um, cognitive science tells us that the brain engages in information processing, that it's um, basically a computational engine. So why do we need to be conscious if it's all just information processing? Why does it need to have a felt quality of experience? That's the hard problem of consciousness, and that's due to the philosopher David Chalmers. I don't like the dichotomy human and AI, because I think in the future, we will be increasingly integrated with artificial intelligence. But what I'm not clear on is whether the integration will happen through primarily the use of wearables 
Facebook already has a wristband which detects motion initiation in the brain and it's going into beta testing in only a few months or if it would be through something like Neuralink technology, brain chip technology. And it may be that first we see wearables and later it evolves into, you know, AI actually inside of the head. Um, so I do think that us versus them is not subtle enough. It's going to be a matter of integration. All right. Um, but I don't think that as we move into the future, we could fully merge with artificial intelligence either. I don't think an unenhanced human, unfortunately, could transition over and become a form of artificial intelligence. In fact, I'll be talking about that, I'm sure, in the panel later today with uh, some transhumanists, because the transhumanists do believe that we could actually merge with AI. So for example, people like Elon Musk and the late Stephen Hawking believed that you could replace parts of your brain with microchips and actually survive the death of the brain. Well, it depends on the domain of AI research and AI applications that we're talking about. So when it comes to social media, are we being sensible? No. I mean, look at the media bubbles, or excuse me, the algorithmic bubbles that amplified social discontent on Facebook. Or think about the clickbait that we see in the media. And it's not the fault of the reporters, it's the system. You know, you're forced to basically write very quick articles in only a few hours, and then they become clickbait. Um, you know, so, I mean, in that domain, I'm very unhappy, but in other domains, um, why, you know, artificial intelligence isn't necessarily problematic. I mean, wow, if it's helping compute difficult algorithms that humans can't really compute efficiently, then what's wrong with that? Um, it's transformative um, in, you know, lots of different domains, even looking for um, disease cures. Like, you know, AI is looking for um, potential vaccines and therapies for COVID as we speak. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.